الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم The subject of fiqh and we have reached time for Maghrib and Isha prayers issue 743 uh, you see, this is important, and there are uh, a lot of confusion about uh, time of uh, Maghrib and Isha prayers. Uh, according to ulama, our ulama, they said, some of them said, only sunset is sufficient to start the prayer of Maghrib and after Maghrib Isha. Some of the ulama said, is obligatory precaution or you must or is recommended precaution whatever they they have views but it's better to wait for about 15 minutes when the eastern redness will disappear not the west the sunset is at the west in the east side still there is redness and that redness of the sky, the sky is not dark yet. Gradually the sky become dark and that redness will move above us in the sky and then move to the west. So when that disappears, the time for Maghrib prayer will start. While some, unfortunately, they try to abuse the followers of Ahlul Bayt that they will not pray unless stars will appear in the sky that is not true, and nothing to do with the stars. It has to do with the confirmation that the night has started. Because as long as sunrise is there, we cannot pray Maghrib and Isha. When the night starts, then we can pray. We are allowed, that is the time for Maghrib, and after Maghrib is Isha prayer. Now when starting of the night is there, here is the difference. Is it sunset or it is disappearance of the eastern redness? Which one? So some of the ulama said sunset alone will not mean the night will start because still the sky is shiny and the red light is there. And um, actually according to uh, uh, the people who uh, discuss the uh, Asra uh, Leji, they said uh, it is the, what the followers of Ahlul Bayt say, the real night will start when the eastern redness will disappear completely. I mean it will move from east to above us till the west and then disappear. In certain Countries, they are, um, they have to wait in about 10 minutes for that to disappear. In other countries, 15, 20, maximum maybe 22 minutes. Those who are in the north, it may take a longer time. Those who are, um, well, souther, they may have less time. But however, it is something around 15 to 20 minutes or let us say 10 to 20 minutes, depends on which country you live, uh, that is still witness. Uh, and as I said, not all our ulama, they say it is a must. Some say sunset alone is sufficient. Uh, I mean, the reason why they have fatwa, because there are a hadith, they, they ask the imam, when is the time for Maghrib? He say when sunset is there. Another one asked him, he said, when the eastern redness is not there. So how to combine these two hadiths? Some of them, they believe that the, the second one is an explanation for the first one. Because if you have a building in the city, you cannot see sunset usually in the cities, unless if you are in a village, in the desert, then you can see the horizon and you can see sunset. Otherwise, in cities, you have no chance to see the sunset. There are too many buildings in front of you and houses are in front of you, you cannot see it. So how to know sunset is there or not? 
nowadays in the modern life, maybe you can depend on your watch. You know the timing, but sometimes your watch is not also uh, proper and exact. Sometimes it is late uh, or um, exceed in five minutes and so on. So again, it's not a good way to trust always, you know. So you want to trust the sky to see, you see when that readiness is not there, definitely sunset is there and the time of Maghrib started. So some take this appearance of the eastern redness as a sign for sunset. That is why I say if you know sunset happened, you can break your fast if you are fasting or start your Maghrib prayer right away. Some say, you know, what is mentioned in a hadith about the disappearance of the redness in the eastern side or in, uh, above us in the sky, by itself is meant. It is not a sign for sunset. By itself is needed. And that is why they say as obligatory precaution, you have to wait to start Maghrib till that moment happens, I mean about 15, 20 minutes after sunset. We read what is there in, in issues of Ayatollah Sistani. Uh, in issue 743, he said the obligatory precaution, so it is not fatwa, is that as long as the redness in the eastern sky appearing after sunset has not passed overhead, so not sufficient in the east to pass, but should pass overhead and cross to the west, should not, uh, has not passed overhead, Maghrib prayer should not be performed. So Maghrib will start after that. Now, issue 744, in normal circumstances, the prescribed time for Maghrib and Isha prayers is till midnight. But if forgetfulness, oversleeping, or being in menstruation, and similar unusual situations prevent one from performing the prayer till midnight, then for them the time will continue till Fajr sets in. In all the cases, Maghrib must be prayed before Isha. And if one contradicts their sequence purposely or knowingly, the prayer will be void. However, if the time left over is just enough for Isha prayers, to be offered within time, then Isha will proceed Maghrib prayers. You see, the time for Maghrib to start, we know it. Now, when is the end of the time of Maghrib? To say the Maghrib and Isha both, their time is for midnight. Now, what is midnight? Again, here there are two views about midnight. Some said midnight is the time between sunset and sunrise. So that is midnight. But some of the ulama said, no, midnight is the mid of the time between sunset and dawn time. So here, naturally, is about 45 minutes less or earlier midnight than till sunrise. Because between dawn and sunrise, usually one hour 30 minutes or one hour 45 minutes and so on, you know. So half of it will be let us say roughly 45 minutes or more. So again, midnight, there is a difference. Um, according to Ayatollah Sistani, midnight is between sunset and downtime. So between sunset and down, that is midnight. And he said the time for Maghrib and Isha is till midnight. But if somebody, he forgot to pray, or he could not pray because of certain unusual circumstances, and so on. Or ladies, they were at a special time, they could not pray, and then later on they become clean, they wanted to pray. So he said the time will continue till down time. According to some other ulama, Maghrib will be qada. Only Isha will continue till down. But here, according to Atullah Sistani, Maghrib and Isha both will continue till down time. However, Maghrib has to be offered before Isha. So let us say if you forgot, let us say if midnight is around 12 o'clock, 
and somebody forgot at 1 o'clock after midnight, he remembered, then he prayed Maghrib and Isha as wajib. But according to other ulama, Maghrib will be qada, only Isha would be wajib. See, there is a different of views on this issue between ulama. But again, he mentioned if at last moments, let us say five minutes before downtime, he remembered that he should offer his prayer. Now, that last time, as we said in the previous lecture, is specific for Isha. He has to pray only Isha, and then the Maghrib will be Qada later on, because time of Fajr will start, downtime will start. So this is about this issue. Issue 745, if a person offers Isha prayer before Maghrib, prayers by mistake, and takes notice of this after completing the prayers, his prayers will be valid, and then he should offer Maghrib prayers after that. You see, it is obligatory to pray Maghrib before Isha. That is intentionally. But sometimes one may do mistake. He thought he prayed Maghrib, he starts with Isha prayer. And when he finished Isha prayer, then he remembers that Maghrib prayer was not prayed. So he says his Isha prayer is all right. He has to perform Maghrib prayer, become after Isha, because he forgot, not intentionally. Otherwise, if we do it intentionally, his prayer is void, not right. Issue 746, if a person begins Isha prayers by mistake before Maghrib prayers and realize during the prayers that he has made an error, and if he has not yet gone into Ruku' of the fourth Rak'at, he should turn his knee to Maghrib prayers and complete the prayers. Thereafter, he will offer Isha prayers. However, if he has entered Ruku' of the fourth Rak'at, he can continue to complete the Isha prayers and thereafter pray Maghrib. Now, in the previous issue, he said if you forgot and he started Isha, he completed Isha prayer, and then he realized he did not pray Maghrib. In this issue, he said, no, it is at the middle of the prayer. It is at the second rak'at, third rak'at. Fourth rak'at before going to ruku'. Start standing, saying, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu akbar, has not gone for ruku', and then he realized that he did not offer Maghrib prayer. How he is offering Isha prayer. He said, in that case, he can sit. He should not go for ruku'. He said, and complete his prayer. He did tashahud, he do uh, salam, and change his intention from Maghrib to Isha. If it is in the first rak'at, second rak'at, or third rak'at, well again, what he need only to change his intention. While praying, when he realized, he said, well, I changed my intention from Isha to Maghrib. He completed as Maghrib, and then he pray Isha afterwards. But here he said, Af after ruku' of fourth rak'at, he started the ruku' of fourth rak'at, he realized he should complete his prayer as Isha, and then pray Maghrib. That is because he forgot. Issue 747, in normal circumstances, the end of the time for Isha prayers is midnight. And the night will be calculated from down, Subh Sadiq. As we said, some said night will be calculated from sunset and sunrise, and some from between sunset and downtime. According to Atullah Sistani, it is up to downtime. Issue 748, if a person in normal circumstances does not offer Maghrib or Isha prayers till after midnight, he should, as an obligatory precaution, offer the prayers in a question before the down prayers, without making a niyat of ada 
that is in time or qada after the lapse of the time. You see, he said, if he has certain special circumstances or forgot, or ladies was un- unclean and then later on she cleaned. So in those circumstances, the time will continue till downtime. But if intentionally he is lazy and intentionally he delay his prayer, and midnight started and he has not offered Maghrib or Isha prayer. So here, what will be his intention? He said here, he should not have the intention of Ada means praying on time or Qada, which means praying after. You see, whatever is my duty prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will pray it. I pray Maghrib, whatever is my duty prescribed by Allah. I don't know my duty is to be Ada or Qada. So whatever it is, God knows. So I pray as whatever is my duty. Because here it's not known really. Is it right to say it is Ada on time? Because it is not on time. To say Qadha, well, there are possibility that the time will continue till downtime. So in this case, he should have that niyat. And we should not do niyat of Ada or Qadha, whatever is my duty. Now we come to regarding uh, time for Fajr prayers, issue 749. Just before dawn, a column of whiteness rises upward from the east. It is called the first dawn. When this witnesses spreads, it is called the second dawn. When this whiteness spreads, it is called the second dawn. And the prime time for Sobha prayers. The time for Sobha prayers is still is till sunrise. Now there are two down time, you know. One, they call it first and second, as he used the term here. Sometimes they use it the false and true. Al-Fajr al-Kadhib wa al-Fajr al-Sadiq. What is the false down? You see, in the when the night is there, it is dark. But at the place where expected sunrise to be there, when you look to the east, at one time, you see light started and that light go horizontal upward to the sky. So that light which is going horizontal to the sky is not the right down, not the true one, it's the false down. It will take about 10 minutes or 15 minutes and that will disappear com- completely. Then again, light will be seen that there is a difference. It was completely dark and then there's little light will start but that light will spread right and left of the sunrise place. It will spread. And then it will move to the sky, spread horizontally and perpendicularly. That is the true down, also Al-Fajr al-Sadiq. The time for morning prayer is when the second down time or the true down start. Not the first one, but the second one. And the end of the time is till sunrise. So if sunrise happens, then the prayer will be qadha, will not be on time. Now we come to rules regarding times of prayer, issue 750. A person can start offering prayers only when be when he becomes certain that the time has set in or when two just persons inform that the time has set in. In fact, one can rely upon the adhan or an on advice of a person who knows the timing and is reliable. Now here is an important issue. Many people, without making sure that the time of Zohar or the time of Maghrib or time of morning prayer is set in, they rush and they pray. Well, that is not the right way. He has to be certain himself that the time is set in. He should make sure that his watch is right. The people who make the prayer table, timetable, they are really uh, trustworthy and you can depend on them because many 
a print prayer timetable, but there are mistakes in it. So one has to, to know that they are really trustworthy or the time he knows the time he see, if it is downtime, if he can see it. Well, in big cities, because there is light, it's not possible to see beginning of downtime. But if somebody is in desert or in a village or in between cities, and when the horizon is in front of him, he can see it, you know, but uh, in common cities, naturally, it's not possible to see the downtime. Uh, but then one has to rely on if there are two just people who say are a witness that the downtime, let us say, started, or Dhuhr time started, or Maghrib time started. Well, usually there are no two just witness, let us say, practically saying. Uh, so I said if we are uh, confident that the person who recite Adhan, he himself is a trustworthy, we are in a mosque or in an Islamic center and somebody recite the Adhan, and we know him, he is a trustworthy. He will not start Adhan unless he make sure in, in his own way that the time started. He must have checked the timetables for the, the prayer. He must have uh, read more details about it and he is sure the time start. Then we can trust that person even if they are not two just people, but somebody trustworthy and we get Assurance, you know, at Minan, let us say 95%, 96%, 97%, I'm sure that the person who recited Adhan is trustworthy and Adhan, the time must have set, you know. So we have to be, let us say, certain, 100% or at least sure the time of, of prayer is set. Now, issue 751, if a person cannot be certain about the prime time for prayers due to a personal handicap like blindness or being in the prison cell he should delay the prayer till such time when he feels sure that the time has set in and as an obligatory precaution he should act the same way when there are general hindrance like dust or clouds uh, you know if there is a dust or there is a cloud, you cannot see, uh, make sure that sunset is there or not. You know, maybe it is dark half an hour before sunset. Or you cannot know about sunrise, for example. So one should not rush for the prayer, should wait till he is certain the time is set. Because to pray before time is not right, has no value. So one has to make sure that the time is set. So if somebody is in jail, for example, and then if the people who tells him that the time is set are reliable, fine. But if they are not reliable, he can wait another, let us say, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever, time till he is sure the time is set. You know. Some people, unfortunately, rush, you know. And I have seen sometimes in some countries, Adhan is set in Ramadan, man, because they want the people to break the fast in rush. Still half the sun is there, not complete sunset, and then they recite Adhan. And people rush after Adhan to break their fast without waiting a few minutes to make sure that the person has not done a mistake. And maybe because of complaints from people about that, the government in that country, I don't want to mention it, it's a Muslim, one of the Muslim countries, they started two, three minutes after sunset to make the Adhan for Maghrib, in order to make sure 100% sunset is right. So what I mean, not always we rush blindly and say, because Adhan is said it is all right. No, sometimes they do mistakes. Issue 752. If a person is satisfied on the basis of any one of the above methods, that the time for prayers has set in and he begins offering prayers, but then realizes during the prayers that the time has not yet set in, his prayers is void. So if at time of the prayer, he starts the prayer, and later on he realizes 
but he, it was before the time. Still, Dhar prayer is not there, and he started before because winter and summer, the timing are different. So he looked to his watch and he thought it is still summer while it is in winter, and maybe in midday, about 10, 15 minutes, there is a difference. So it's earlier. So if you realize he did a mistake, his prayer is void, and he should uh, start prayer again on time. Now, if after the prayer he realized that all his prayer, not at time of the prayer, again his prayer is void. So it's after the prayer, within the prayer, if he realized it is outside the time completely, then his prayer is void. He say, however, if one learns as he prays that the time has just entered, or if he learns the after the prayer that the time entered while he was in the process of praying, his prayer will be valid. You see, at the beginning, he was satisfied. Not that blindly he started the prayer. He trusted the person who recited the Adhan, or trusted his watch, and trusted the people on the timetable because he knows them. But then later on realized his watch was wrong, or the one who recited Adhan was not. So he did research at the beginning, and he was uh, satisfied. But then ultimately, there was some mistake. Sometimes mistakes happen. So he said if his prayer was completely out of the time, then is void. He has to repeat praying. But if half of the prayer was out and, and another half, I mean half or part, let us say, of it, and he rea realized that part of it was on time, uh, well, his prayer is all right. No need to repeat. Issue 7, 53, if a person is heedless of the fact that he should pray after ensuring that the time has set in, and if he realized after the prayers that he had offered the entire prayers in time, his prayers is in order. Now he was not really aware of it, but he thought it is the time of a prayer and he prayed. And then after a prayer, when he started thinking, was my prayer on time or not? They said, yes, it was on time. It was all right. So though at the beginning he did not make sure, but his prayer came on time. And he was not aware of it. Uh, so his prayer is all right. And if he realizes that he had offered his prayers before time, or does not realize whether he had offered the prayers within time or not, his prayers will be void. Here, because he did not make sure that the time is there, and then later on, by chance, a mistake happened. He was heedless of it, not aware of it, not thinking about it, and he just started his prayer. So if it comes by chance on time, fine. If it is outside the time, then his prayer is void. In fact, if he realizes after offering prayers that the time for prayers had set in while he was praying, he should offer that prayer again. So even if at mid middle of the prayer, time started, because he did not care to make sure at the beginning, he should pray again. Issue 754. If a person was certain that the time for prayers had set in and began offering prayers, but while praying, he doubted at the beginning, it was with certainty, but at time of the prayer, doubt came in his mind. Whether or not the time for it had actually set in, his prayers would be void. You know, because he is still at time of the prayer, and he is not sure if the time is there or not, so his prayer is void. However, if he is certain while offering prayers that the time for it has set in, but doubts whether what he has already performed in the prayers had been in time or not, his prayer is valid.
The difference here, he was certain the time is there, he started the prayer. At the middle of the prayer, now he has doubt whether the time is set in or not. He is not sure that the time is there. So he says the prayer is void. But if at the middle of the prayer, now he is sure that the time is there, but he does not know it was from beginning or not, then his prayer is all right. So that is the difference. You know, At the beginning, he was certain, but when he prayed, he was sure that it was out of time, naturally, there's no value. But then, in the second possibility, he said, you know, at the middle, he knows that the time is there, but he's not sure time was at the beginning or at the middle. He said it is, his prayer is all right, and that to be counted. So there are very delicate possibilities, and uh, one has to read them and remember them properly. You know. Issue 755, if the time left for prayer is so little that if we perform some mustahab acts of the prayer, an obligatory part of the prayers will fall beyond the prescribed time. One should not perform those mustahab acts. For example, if on account of reciting qunut, a part of the prayers will lapse beyond time, one should do without qunut. You see, um, sometimes one is awake only maybe five minutes before sunrise. He may need three minutes to perform wudu. Now it's only hardly two minutes are there to perform the prayer. Now if we want to do mustahab qunud there or when you go to ruku' Subhana Rabbi al-Azim wa bihamdi Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah Well, the rest are mustahab only Subhana Rabbi al-Azim wa bihamdi is wajib So here, part of the prayer will be out of time He said he should not do mustahab here He should do only whatever wajib You can say Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah three times or Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim wa Bihamdi, and that's all. Of course, with stability, with all conditions of the prayer, but no need to do mustahab and make it long to finish um, as quick as possible. Issue seven, If the time at the disposal of a person is sufficient for performing one rakat only, he should offer the prayers with the niyat of ada, that is to say offering at the same time. However, one should not delay offering prayers intentionally. Uh, Well, intentionally one should not delay. I mean, I am lazy and I pray Dhor and Asr at the end of the time and then there is no sufficient time or morning to be late, no. But if by chance the time was tight and only one rak'at is on time, the rest are out of the time, say this prayer is all right. If one rak'at is on time and the rest of the prayer is out of the time, his prayer is all right. Issue 757, if a person who is not a traveler has at his disposal time for offering five rak'as till sunset, he should offer both Dhor and Asr prayers. And if he has less time than that, he should offer only Asr prayers. We said the last time of the midday prayers is specifically for Asr. So now if he has... He said five rak'at, let us say five minutes, he has time. So if you pray Dhuhr prayer, four rak'at, four minutes will finish. And for Asr prayer, one rak'at will be on time, and three rak'ats will be out of the time. He said, as he said mentioned before, if one rak'at is on time, the rest will be accepted. So you should pray first Dhuhr and then Asr prayers. Even if Asr only one rak'at will be there on time. Issue 
issue 758. If a person who is a traveler has sufficient time at his disposal till sunset for offering three rak'at, he should offer dhur and asr prayers. And if he has lesser time than that, he should offer only asr prayers. You know, for a traveler, because dhur is two rak'at and asr two rak'at, so if he has time for only three rak'at, not fine. So two dhur will finish and one asr. Uh, it is okay. So that is similar to the previous one, but that is for a traveler. Issue 759, it is mustahab that a person should offer prayers at the prime time prescribed for it. And great emphasis has been laid on it. Alternatively, the nearness, the nearer the prayer are to its prime time, the better, except where there is a good reason for delay like waiting to join the prayers in congregation, uh, Salatul Jama'ah. Uh, recommended time, and greatly recommended that at the beginning of the time, or called it the prime of the time, to pray, you know. Uh, and if delayed, then as nearer as possible, not delayed till end. He said, because one hour passed, then I would pay, pray it at the end of the time. No as near as possible to the prime of the time. But if there is good reason, Imam of the Jama'at in congregation is late 10 minutes, uh, so you are waiting 10 minutes to delay it, till Imam will come because the thawab of Jama'at is much more than thawab of praying individually. So here to delay it is better and that is okay. Sufficient till here, والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآله